You're not trying to escape, are you? I'll yield to none. Prepare yourself. I'm ready. Try again. It all happened like I knew it would. 
A single drop of source magic. And, like flies to honey, the monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared and sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill God Woken. But instead, I became part of their story. So, it, it wasn't a dream after all. No known associates. Oh, I don't even remember them strapping me down. Oh, I don't even remember them strapping me down. Bleeding collar! It's stuck fast! I don't even remember them strapping me down. Ah, you're up. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. Yes, this is a rare kind of magic. I'll need to write to headquarters right away. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officers' quarters. Oh dear, I'm afraid you're a long way from home, my lord. A long way from the little bells that make footmen come a-running. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely, eventually. 
In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it, see? The collar's function. It neuters you, of sorts. Makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. No known associates. In fact, he seemed quite averse to spending time with the others. You've been collared and you've been told why. There really is no need for you to linger. Good gods! This... there's been a murder here! Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no Voidwalk and followed the source that did this. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Finn was killed by Sauce. If a Magister could do that, there wouldn't be a Magister. It looks more like a passenger managed to slip their collar. And the rest, well, you see the evidence in front of you. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Thanks. I just want to catch whoever did this before they hurt anyone else. Sing us a song, I know you can. Be good, you scallywags. How dare you? You're a human, like me. That means we're friends already. My mum told me not to make friends with lizards and elves and dwarfs and stuff. But I think they're okay. Unacceptable. I've never dined on anything less than a dozen course dinner, and I don't intend to do away with the custom. Well, uh, there has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Magisters more concerned than your appetite. Don't you get saucy with me, when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. He never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Vic. Need to register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? Glad to hear it. 
you head on in now, Williams will get you shot at fast. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there, sorcerer! Go and fetch Magister Siwan! We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, man, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. What? What happened? Ifan lies motionless, curled on the ground like an animal. Under his shaggy hair, you can see green eyes fluttering as if in a nightmare. A low whine escapes his lips. His eyes flicker open, but he doesn't register your presence at all. Lucian? Lucian? Ifan cries out, then his eyes fall closed again. No matter how much you shake him now, he cannot be roused. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. No, not the final dark. Not yet. It's no use. 
Your words do not seem to reach her. The dice roll darkly. They're rolling for me. The Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding from a dire-looking wound. The Magister lies on the floor. won't come off. was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You don't recognize the symbol, but it's clearly warning you away. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply gray. The color drains from your hand, and you are left numb. It doesn't budge. the door, your bed the door groans open, but an ashen shadow clouds your mind. suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular, and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire, it turns into must when wet, it cannot even resist acid! No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh. Yes? Shouldn't you be running or screaming or some such? The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. I know your god did not gift you with much. I kindly use the little you were given. Do you look at me and think, 
Why, yes, there is someone with organs enough to drown. <sighs> Trifling matters like water and poison do not concern me. No, damp robes are the most I have to fear. Once this glorified skiff hits the seafloor, I will simply walk to shore. Whereas you, I believe, have lifeboats to pointlessly squabble over. I believe you did, although I was wearing the face of an elf at the time. I had a mask that was stolen by that damned witch after her little scene. Still, she'll drown with the rest of these fools, and I will simply pluck my mask from her cold, dead hands. The skeleton holds up his book in one quick, frustrated movement. I am trying to discover if there is anyone worth saving. And I will be damned if I let the lives of some mayflies get in my way. Go on, go, swim or drown or do whatever takes your fancy. I have a book to read. first, just like the old stories say. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. He said there were other people down there. We... we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here.
As the boat rocks downward, a prayer to Lucian you once heard passes through your mind. The law of life from divine within saved me from death and the shackles of sin. You clench your eyes and brace for impact. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity, High Judge Orivan. Those void ones can make short bloody work of the ship. Am I... the lone survivor? It seems someone, something, wanted me alive. That thing won't come off! <laughs> <laughs> 